Today, I'm going to show you the easiest and most basic way to do SEO for print on demand products. You could also do this for other things as well. It doesn't have to be print on demand products, but I'll leave a link in the description to a free SEO course that I've took the time to compile and I'll be consistently adding more and more lessons over time. I'll leave that link in the description if you want to go ahead and access it. And if you think that SEO interests you for your print on demand business, and once again, it's completely free, there's no cost to join. So I'll leave that link in the description. But anyways, let's get started with today's basic and easy strategy. In fact, I'd argue that this is probably the easiest strategy out there. It used to be a little bit harder because we didn't have GPT. But even if you have the free version of GPT, this works as well. So here in GPT, I simply ask and I prompt it to create some quotes for me, uh, t-shirt quotes for a specific niche. In my case, I wrote baseball here. Now, in I kind of want to iterate that I don't really create baseball designs. Might do it in the future, but don't really create them. In fact, maybe in my lifetime, I created a few, you know, not too many, but there's a bunch of quotes that came up. So I said to GPT, I said, hey, please provide me a list of t-shirt quotes in the baseball niche. You guys can switch it up for any niche that you want. It doesn't have to be baseball. You can also switch up the quantity. So you can say 10 quotes, five quotes, 100 quotes, whatever, right? Um, here it says, here are some fun and catchy t-shirt quotes tailored for baseball fans. And of course, it provides me the list. Instantly, one of these keywords catch my attention. Now, for SEO, it's important to understand that really what SEO is, is you're optimizing a listing, uh, whether it's a blog, it's a piece of content, it's a web page, a product. In our case, since it's print on demand, it happens to be a product. You're optimizing that listing for the search engine's needs or the meets uh, or the needs of the reader. Okay. So millions of readers go on Google every single day. They'll perform searches and out of the searches, results will appear, hence why it's called a search engine. Um, Google is currently the largest search engine. That might change in the future, but for now it's Google. Um, when there is a search presented, results are presented. You want your results to be presented so you can get the organic search engine sales. One of the easiest ways to do this is to create the title of your product matching the exact search of a reader or a viewer. All right, so if somebody's searching for a life is a pitch shirt, that might be something that they might be interested in uh, purchasing, right? In fact, it actually shows based on the search that somebody is genuinely looking for the product to buy. So this one, like I said, caught my attention. It's short. It's straight to the point. I went ahead and copied it and pasted it in my keyword research tool here that I use. And the keyword life's a pitch happens to have 500 searches a month. That's a lot of searches. Now I also checked why, because it's important to look at the reasonings behind why something is being searched. And the first link here happens to be an Amazon link. I also noticed a Goodreads link here. And immediately I thought maybe this is a title of a book. And indeed I checked it is. So I wanted to dive further and see if potentially people are actually buying uh, Life is a Pitch shirt hoodie, hats, whatever. So I just typed in the correlating word that relates to that product. So I typed in shirt here, I hit search, and I get a 10 search volume, an average of 10 searches a month. Of course, there was some trend here, you know, higher in June of 2020, but there's still a consistent search volume of 10. This indicates two main things. If there's a low search volume, there's a high potential, there also could be low competition. The only way we can figure that out, though, is by actually clicking around, seeing the results, and seeing what happens. In my case, it, I, I'm assuming here, just off the bat, based on the SERP presented to me, that there's actually low competition for this keyword. And don't get me wrong, all the different quotes that GPT presents are not always going to be low competition. It just happens to be that this one might, because I don't see... Well, the top print-on-demand companies are already listing it. Of course, I do see an Etsy link, which probably is going to relate to print-on-demand. You know, I feel like that's the most logical form. Um, but I see an Amazon link, which once again is the, the book link, but I don't see a Redbubble or a T Public or a Society6, Threadless, any kind of other link in the top seven. 
that indicates to me that once again, this could potentially be a low competition niche. So there's only one way to find out. I can go here, take this keyword, life's a pitch, and go to things like Redbubble, TeePublic, etc., wherever I want to post this and search it, right? So I'll go over here to Redbubble, paste it, life's a pitch, and it has 10,000 search results. So life, life's a pitch or life is a pitch. Let's go ahead and fix that keyword. Life's, life is a pitch has, it says here a total of 10,000. But once again, uh, Redbubble does have some issues, some glitches when it comes down to the true search results of a keyword. It sometimes shows relevant keywords, but not exact search term keywords. So if I look at some of these other designs here, like football is life, mom, that does mean there's an open category from here, for here, for a true search keyword, uh, an exact term match, I can actually rank here relatively easily on Redbubble. I know it says 10,000 competition, but this is not a true number. In fact, many, many times has Redbubble glitched out in situations like this and wrote astronomically high numbers. I know that this is not the case because these designs don't reflect that. In fact, I can go ahead and take different uh, designs like this that end up in the top 20, look at their tags, and they probably don't have word for word the exact tag for the keyword that exists. In fact, it doesn't. I already looked through here. So in Redbubble, it's an example of a low competition niche. Um, and once again, I only f found this out two ways. Uh, with this software here, this keyword tool software, and GPT. So I'll leave a link in the description for the keyword tool. You can access a 14-day free trial if you want to go ahead and use it. But it is extremely useful to use all these tools combined because this is not just really one tool. It's like four tools combined. First thing is I see a trend. Second thing is I see a SERP. The next thing I see is search volume. And then finally, I see all the related keywords to it. Now, once again, this is a very specific niche and baseball can have all kinds of different quotes and taglines and puns. And it's important to have better results with GPT. So it comes down to prompt engineering. I can specify to GPT, hey, give me some pun quotes for baseball that would fit great on shirts. In that case, they could be possibly have high search demand. I can also indicate to, to GPT, give me quotes that are puns for baseball that have high search demand. I can say that straight out. Now, it might not always provide that, but it could increase the potential. Uh, here's another example of a very, very basic prompt that I provided to GPT that provides me a whole bunch of different quotes. And once again, it's important to not just sit here and create designs for each and every one. We want to play chess, not checkers. And be playing chess is you know, predicting our success 5, 10, 20 moves ahead. So in this case, I wouldn't just literally copy and paste and create a bunch of designs. That wouldn't be logically sound. What would happen here is I want to improve my chances to get the highest sales possible. And part of doing that is trying to find low competition niches. How do I find low competition niches? I pick out the quotes I place them in the search and I find low competition niches that way. Okay, so here's an example of a keyword that I already know has high search volume. This keyword is ball is life, which happens to be, I believe, a YouTube channel. I used to watch it as a kid, but ball is life. And it, although it's great, right, it's a great keyword. It gets a ton of search volume, 8,200 searches a month. It's not a keyword that we would use for a t-shirt, especially because it might be trademarked, which brings me into a next concept is it's important to do some trademark research if you feel like you need to for certain keywords, you know, um, and, and just kind of go deeper into it. But the more prompt engineering you do, the better quotes you have, the more searches you do and validate them by search volume and trend, you can definitely see the long-term success of a sale happening. All right, guys, there's many ways to expand on this strategy. I'll share them in the future, but this is literally, literally the easiest way to capitalize on SEO for print on demand. All right, guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, all the resources to the free SEO course is in the link in the description. The free trial to this uh, keyword tool that I use 
and also GPT, you can use the free version if you wish as well. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for watching and peace out, bye.